Greetings. Uh, the reason I put this video together is I, I have some videos up on YouTube that um, are really long. They're, it's like a four videos in an hour and 40 minutes, I think, altogether. And that, that includes everything that I did on my bike, which, you know, a lot of people, from the number of people that viewed video number one, two, three, four, um, I think I lost about half the people. Um, you know, they have a few hundred views, and then the last one, only has like a hundred so that's how many people watched it to the end to consider doing the whole project but if you uh, this is just for an overview this video here is just for an overview so I suggest that you go up to this uh, site this is a YouTube video that uh, you know if you don't know what this quick detached tour pack kit is all about <laughs> this video will explain it to you it's only a couple minutes long you can look it up on YouTube. The name of it is Detachable Tour Pack Tutorial 2018 Harley Davidson Limited. Or you can just type in this, what I, the red part of this, and you can, they'll find it in no other videos. <laughs> so the guy just shows you, you know, the, the Ultra Limited on the left, and he, you know, takes the seat off and then disconnects some connectors. Actually, they're already disconnected in this video, but you would have to do that. And then he lifts, he unclips the uh, tour pack and lifts it off and puts it on a table. And then he puts a street glide seat on it. So it's only a couple minute video. And this will show you what you can do with a detachable tour pack. You basically have a Harley Transformer, two different bikes. So this is something I just threw up here. A lot of times I see the, you know, guys that uh, do this detachable tour pack kit. Um, the guy on the right with the black bike did it, the Harley design, and then the guy in the middle with the blue bike, um, he chose to do what I did with a nice clean rear fender look. And, you know, every time that somebody throws pictures up here, they're before and after with their detachable tour pack. For every guy, I think there's like 20 or 30 guys that are thinking about doing it. <laughs> so that's that's really what this video is for. You know, it's just showing you what this entails for whatever year you have. It's just an overview. It doesn't go into really, really deep detail, but enough detail to where you get the idea of, you know, what's involved. So this is the newer design. This is from, from uh, 2009 and newer. And there's also some changes, you know, in some of the later um, designs. But 2009 is when they redesigned the frame of the touring bikes. And, you know, it wasn't all just for this. There were some redesigns in the front with the uh, engine mounts and stuff like that. Um, I read it once. You know, all the Rushmore stuff, if you want to look at it and see what uh, what exactly they did between 2008 and 2009. Um, the uh, picture on the left shows the uh, two-point mounting system, which is what they call it. It's actually four points, two different axes, because you have, you know, two bushings at each uh, axis, you know or each point I mean so you can use the inner bushings or the outer bushings now the tour pack uses the outer bushings so this is a much cleaner design when you have the tour pack off you only have you know what you see in the red arrows here and to take the tour pack off you just unlatch those little black things and you pull it up in the back those are just clips that you know um, make sure that the tour pack doesn't come off when you're riding you have to manually uh, disconnect these things and then you just uh, pull it off. And to put it back on, you have to put the front into the slot first, and then you drop the back in, and then you uh, clip those black clips. And on the right, you can see that the newer design comes with LED lights for your saddlebags, which is something that you can do with an older model, too, if you want to. But keep in mind, when you put LEDs on your saddlebags, every time you take your saddlebags off to wash your bike, you have to disconnect the connectors so I just didn't want to do that I opted to not put any lights on my saddlebags and this is the older way to do it it's a little bit less clean looking you can see that you you know you remove all the old hardware that uh, you know held up the tour pack and then you put this uh, quick disconnect kit on and on the right it shows you the tour pack lifted up in the big uh, heavy duty chrome bracket that attaches to the tour pack and stays with it and basically the same thing here you put it in the front slot first and then you drop it down on the on the back and you clip it with those black uh, locks kind of 
And you can see this kit also comes with these triangular bars, which is why it's a little bit less clean than the other design. So this triangular bar that you see sticking out from the back of the, the, the bags, that's part of the hardware kit. That's get, that gives you your new mounting points for the tour pack. So I just threw this picture in here to remind you if you have an older bike on the right, uh, you know, all the way up to 2008. I think all of the years between 1998 and 2008, your your turn signals are 1156 bulbs. So they're blinkers only. There's no running light. You need an 1157 bulb to do that. You also need another wire. So you can't just change bulbs. You would have to rewire your turn signals to get 1157s to work in there. So unfortunately, when you take the tour pack off, the you know the turn signals are not running lights all you have is a tail light basically because that little accent light on the bottom of the fender is a tiny bulb and it's not made to be seen more than you know 10 feet away <laughs> so when you do the harley design and take your um tour pack off you have a tail light and that's the only light you have in the back also the harley design um the end product looks like these pictures here so you have a a u-shaped tube going over your fender that holds a license plate and it just clutters up the rear fender if you ask me i just really don't like this at all uh not too much offense to the people who own these bikes or <laughs> if you did it the harley way this is what you have because it's easy you know because you you don't have to do anything with the tail light lens you still have the clear window pointing up at your license plate so it's on the top you know it's just but it's really cluttered and by cluttered i'll show you what i mean these are newer you know bikes the bike on the left is a street glide on the right you have a road glide nice clean fender design you've got a tail light with turn signals and a license plate there's no clutter back there there's no license plate hanging out in the air for no reason um, this just looks a lot you know cleaner and a lot more modern because this is like the new look of harley's and there's a tri bar light at the bottom of the fender there's a light and this is what my bike looks like so after i'm done with the project you know regular looking uh, ultra uh, classic on the right and on the left you can see it's in street glide mode so it's kind of a harley transformer you can switch back and forth between two bikes and in uh, street glide mode the rear fender's got a really nice clean look with a license plate below it um, i put in the smoke uh, lenses here so there's a red led and the um, tail light and there's amber leds in the turn signals or maybe i used red i forget <laughs> and then the bottom picture here just shows you a couple of the goodies that you can put on your bike uh, you know the tour pack or you can put on a backrest uh, with the luggage rack so just to give you a little overview i'm going to go through this really fast when you take your tour pack off the bike um, the first thing you want to do this is not intended to show you how to do it this is just an overview of what needs to be done there's more detail in my other videos. Um, so you take the pouch off first and then you can take the liner out. It just pops out. And then uh, what you see is the middle picture here. Now there's a lot of extra wiring in mind because Harley Davidson did this, I think. The, the previous owner of my bike had Harley do everything. Um, he never did anything to the bike. Every time you know he wanted something done, he took it to Harley. So the middle picture shows uh, he has a bunch of ground lighting and there's I don't know how many there are they're, they're all over the bike <laughs> and they terminated them in the in the um, tour pack which is not a bad idea because it's nice and dry there so your connectors are never going to get wet and your lights shouldn't fail but uh, you know it doesn't work with a detachable tour kit I don't want to put a connector on each one of these wires I just ripped them out of there and on the right picture you can see one of the connectors that still works um, there, there's one connector inside of the tour pack so you're gonna have to disconnect the antennas and relocate them so you don't have to bother with you know connecting them and re disconnecting them um, and so you can have antennas when the tour pack is off you're gonna have to disconnect the antennas and the uh, speaker wires and the lighting and one of the wires one of the connectors is inside the tour pack and I don't have that in this picture, but there was a wire running to the back with a connector inside the tour pack. You don't want you don't want to have that. Just leave the connector there, 
cut the wire off about six inches from the front, you know, and and then put in a new wiring harness. So you can see the bottom picture is kind of what you want to see. When when you uh, take the lift up the flap on your rear, um, uh, you know, on your tour pack, that little flap. After you take the seat off and flip, flip that flap out of the way, you want to see three connectors that are all about the same length. That way you don't have to look for them. <laughs> They're all there. They're all hanging out about six inches. Disconnect, disconnect, disconnect. Take the tour pack off. So that's what the end result should look like is the bottom picture. So here I'm just going over some stuff. The, the top bar here, the purpose of this round, this tubular um, bar on the top is your tour pack is basically a piece of plastic you know it's abs plastic and this gives your tour pack some rigidity and that's why it's shaped like this it's big it doesn't hold it doesn't hold up and support your tour pack it just makes it more rigid what supports it is the bottom uh, tubular u-shaped you know piece of chrome and that's the middle arrow so that thing is connected to the frame you can see there's some hardened bolts connecting it to the frame of the bike and it's also connected to a really heavy duty license plate frame that's much more heavy duty than you need to connect a you know to hold up a license plate <laughs> because it's a structural element to this so if you look on the right you know this u-shaped tube on the bottom which i indicate with the middle arrow here um it had is a structural element for two reasons it, it it was attached to the frame and it's the weight bearing support for the tour pack it's also the weight bearing um, support for your your baggage your your bags I mean so your bags connect to that big chrome piece indicated by the bottom arrow and that is connected to this round piece of tubing too so here just shows you what you need to take off this big piece of tubing on the top you know first you take the tour pack off and then after that you have to take off this piece and then the license plate bracket and then what you have left is that piece of tubing but I decided on my bike I want to cut that off so because it doesn't serve a purpose anymore it, it doesn't do anything it's not supporting your tour pack your new tour pack is going to or your tour pack is going to be supported with this new hardware the, these triangular pieces that connect to your um, big chrome hunk of you know metal that goes down and connects to the lower brackets on your um, your baggage hardware so you know everything's going to rest on this uh, chrome piece right now so you don't really need that tube so I cut it off because I just didn't want a tube running across my rear fender and I didn't want a license plate up above either I wanted a nice clean look so after you cut the tube off you can put these plugs in to cover them up and then you have a nice clean fender I repainted the fender at the same time because it had some scratches in it but these things you can find these uh, little plugs here they're chrome end caps or you can look for spring caps I think it's a three-quarter inch outside diameter and that'll you know plug up your tubing so it doesn't look like somebody cut off a piece of tubing and also here you can see the filler that I put in so the filler um, serves a couple purposes here but the main thing is it holds the LEDs um, that I you know use for additional lighting so I've got two additional lights in the back the tri bar light and these uh, LEDs that go down to filler and you can see um, the filler has some uh, split loom conduit running to it and underneath that you know that keeps everything waterproof and this this uh, split loom conduit runs down both sides of the fender to feed the LEDs and also feed the tri bar light and it's you know part of a new wiring harness that you're going to put in so here's the issue with uh, Harley um, the, with the Harley design after you, re you remove the tour pack um, you don't this is the wiring harness for the rear fender in the, in the right picture or the right side of the picture here with the bottom arrow you can see the the wiring harness running back to your tail light so that is the wiring harness um, the problem is uh, the Harley doesn't make a Y connector for this harness that will give you all six of these um, connectors there's six wires in this connector it's an eight wire connector with 
six pins in it and they're flat pins and you won't find this connector anywhere. <laughs> so there is a connector that will give you, uh, I, th I think it's running lights and uh, your turn signals, but it doesn't doesn't give you brake lights or it gives you brake lights and it doesn't give you turn signals. I forget which one, but there's only three wires, so it can't give you both. So what I decided to do, I look for this wire connector everywhere. You know, I, I look for uh, the connector that I can put my pin. I, you have to buy the connector and then you have to buy pins because, uh, you know, that's the way Harley sells it. it. The original manufacturer makes it that way. So I decided it's time to put in this new connector on the left that actually goes with the newer bikes. And that gives you everything you need in the rear. It gives you the turn signals or running lights and the brake lights and uh, the license plate light so you know i decided to buy this cut out my old connector put in a new connector get you know get modern <laughs> but there's some work involved with it so here on the left you can see there's not much room to work you have a couple inches here and even the new connector you know when you cut it in exactly in half <laughs> You get some pieces that are like an inch and a half long. <laughs> so there's just no room to do anything here. You have to just be patient. You have to strip these wires. And then you can see on the third picture, you know, when I, some people just butt wires together and then solder them. I never got that to work right. I like to twist them halfway and then put them together and finish twisting them. And then you have, you know, a nice group of wires, good connection. And when you solder it, you know, it's not going to come apart. So one thing you do when you put, the, you know, if you want to put this connector in, it's it's going to take you like an hour to do all the soldering here. And the first thing you want to do is put a couple layers of shrink wrap, you know, shove them down the wires away from the heat where you're soldering. And then later you can bring them up. So I put two sets of shrink wrap on it. I do that for everything. And on the right, you can see the, the soldering and uh, they got the digital soldering gun set at 375. And, you know, that makes sure that your solder is going to melt and it's not going to get it's not going to overheat and, you know, mess up your wiring or mess up the, um, you know, the plastic part. So on the left, then after you do that, you know, with uh, the wiring harness, you need to do it with this other the other end of the connector, the female part. So you can see in the second picture here, I have uh, two sets of shrink wrap, a uh, smaller one, and then, uh, you know, I fit that inside the tubes, inside the bigger ones. And then when I got ready to, uh, after I got done soldering, then I pulled the little ones out and shrink them, and then uh, then I pulled the big ones. The third picture, you can see the, the bigger ones are ready to be uh, heated and shrunk. And on the right picture, you can see like on the top, you can see a couple places where you can see there's two layers of shrink wrap. So I, you know, the way this is soldered and the way the shrink wrap seals everything. And then I put split loom conduit on, on the top of this and taped it with electrical wire. So I'm highly confident that I'm not going to have a failure in my wiring harness. <laughs> so, And to make the wiring harness, I, I, I think if you really want to do it right, I think you should use the Harley colors because you're, you're making a harness to go back on both sides of the fender and feed your LEDs and feed your tri bar light. If that's what you choose to use or some other, you know, there's all kinds of lighting that you can use back there. You know, uh, there's all kinds of people that make lighting for the rear of a Harley, you know, additional lighting. And you can pick whatever you want, but you still need to run a wiring wiring harness to it. So Harley's uh, wiring harness is purple, blue, red, orange, black, and brown. So that's the six colors that they use. And then uh, the split, you know, the, uh, I found the 16 gauge um, wires, um, 11 colors, 10 feet each, and it's like $15 shipped. And on the bottom, this is the split loom conduit. I bought two sizes of that, three eighths and quarter inch, I think. Then this is the wiring diagram. The, the left picture here, you can see on the right side of it, that's the Harley wiring diagram. And you can see the colors that go to the rear, um, you know, the rear harness. 
Um, and that's uh, like underneath the word lights, where I have wiring for my set of lights. Underneath the lights, that's the, the part of the wiring harness that goes to the tail light. And you can see there's six wires in it. So, and then you can see on the bottom of that, the uh, new wire, the, the new connector that I bought for modern Harleys. And then on the left, um, the LEDs, see these LEDs are made to be turn signal LEDs and they're actually running lights, brake lights and turn signals. So there they use the international um, standard now, which is yellow and green for the turn signals you know left and right yellow and green and then red and black for hot and um, hot and ground and then the gray wire is um, your running light that's that's a standard if if you take apart a car if you take your lens out of your car you're going to find that you know all the car manufacturers use this it's an international thing you know yellow green are your turn signal things so you're going to have to connect that to the Harley wiring harness that you make with your new connector. So on the right, this is the way I designed the wiring harness so I could just follow it when I'm soldering <laughs> instead of trying to remember it. So the right diagram I just made using PowerPoint, the same thing this presentation is made in. On the right, you can see the original Harley harness. Um, I'm talking, there's, it's kind of divided into three with these blue lines, blue dotted lines. The middle one is the harness that I made, and then the left side is the tri bar light and the LED lights. And there's more details on this in your, um, in, in the other videos if you choose to do this. So then I, I had to have a place to mount the uh, license plate. So what I chose to do here is get like a curved, I, I like these things, it's a curved lay down um, license plate holder, you know, and it, I chose the one that has a nice black back and then you put this big heavy chrome piece on it and it uh, looks pretty heavy duty and well chromed so it should last for a while. But the problem is when you put that in the back of your bike, you you know you have to figure out how to light it because you know there's an issue with these Harleys. <laughs> your original um, Harley Ultra has a upward pointing um, clear plastic to light up the a, a plastic window um, to light up your license plate, and you need it to be on the bottom now. So if you just bought a new lens that had a clear window on the bottom that wouldn't work because why because your turn signal bar would cover up that clear window so you have to figure out another way to light up your license plate and that's what i'm doing here i have a pretty uh well outfitted woodworking shop in my basement just a hobby thing but i build a lot of stuff and i when i make something big like you know i have a you know home theater cabinet in the living room that's 10 feet tall and 10 feet wide and you know, to span uh, enough room to put a big TV in in the middle, I I use this bar, aluminum. I use a bunch of it, and then I use aluminum angle iron so that the middle never droops because I have some drawers going across the middle. So I have a bunch of this hardware. I just happen to have a piece that worked out, you know, it's perfect for what I want to use. <laughs> so I just took a piece of this. I think it's like six inches by like two inches. Um, and I just cut it on my bandsaw and then I wound up with a piece in the middle here. I drilled a couple holes and those holes line up with the license plate bracket mounting holes so I don't have to drill extra holes. And then I shot it with, uh, you know, five or six, six coats of black and hung it up in the shop to dry. You can see the bike in the background there. And then later I decided to bend it, um, and that's because the lower part of this piece of aluminum follows the, the contour of the fender, and it's at an angle. And then your license plate, the lay-down license plate bracket actually puts the license plate a little bit more toward vertical. So I found that if I bent it, bent it, I would have a lot more room for the LED in there. So this is just, you know, something I picked up on eBay. It's, you know, look up LEDs for license plate light. You can light your license plate however you want, you know, but just keep in mind it needs to be lit. It's a, it's a law in most states. And, you know, 
you can there's funky things like you know there's LEDs in your your bolts <laughs> so you can back out these bolts and put in bolts that have LEDs in them <laughs> so there's a lot of ways to light a license plate just decide on something so I had that piece of black and I decided to put a, a metal American flag on it so that's what it looks like on the right so I have a tri bar light I have a filler with LEDs on it and this gives me running lights, brake lights, and turn signals. So this is what it looks like when you're done. Um, I Now, this might sound crazy, but it actually takes a lot less time. Every time you take your tour pack off, you want to tuck your cables away. There's three cables that are going to go to the rear tour pack. And, you know, you need to do something with them. So instead of trying to find some place to tuck each one of them away, just fold them into thirds, put some nylon ties on them, keep some nylon ties in your bags, you know. So every time, and then I have a pair of wire cutters in my bag, and also I have a pair in the toolkit. But So just snip them when you're ready to put the tour pack on. You know, put the tour pack on and then snip these wires and run the cables and then put the seat back on. And when you have the tour pack off, just, you know, this is just really, the, it takes like 10 seconds to fold these cables into thirds and wrap some wire ties, nylon ties around them. And then this is the finished product here. This is uh, what you end up with. It's a Harley Transformer. You got the Ultra Classic on the right. You have the tour pack removed and it's kind of in street glide mode and you have a nice clean looking rear fender. Um, no garbage, no crazy license plate location. And you know, you have the tri bar light in the filler and um, on the bottom two pictures you can see the the bike is set up here with a uh, backrest and a, a luggage rack and on the right you can see just see the luggage rack and the tour pack sitting there and on the left you can see the finished product um, you know your your rear lighting without the turn signals on it when the turn signals are on the uh, the filler light LEDs will will turn yellow and then the uh, tri bar light on the bottom um, flashes and uh, on each side, you know, like a turn signal. So that's it. And this is, uh, you know, if this is what you want to do, watch the longer videos. If if or you can just figure out, you know, I can look at a picture and figure out. Oh, I know how to do that. But if you need to uh, look at the longer videos, it shows you in detail how I made the wiring harness and how I ran it and everything. So those are the longer videos. That there, there's four of them. It'll take you an hour and 40 minutes to watch all four of them. But this video here is just to give you an overview. This is what you could do, possibly, if you want to. Okay, appreciate your time.